Hey. Hey, YouTube. Hey. Hey, you. It's Alan. It's me. Hey. It's time. Time to talk metal. <sighs> yeah, I thought that would get your attention. Wake up. Wake up. Ah, it is time for another edition of Let's Talk Metal. Hope everyone is doing well these days. Today, I've got kind of a fun topic that I am revisiting. I first tackled this back, I believe it was episode 88, and it's coming back around today. We're going to be talking about bands that emulate the style of Queensryche. I hate to call them Queensryche clones, because they're not necessarily trying to do exactly the same sound as Queensryche. They're not tribute bands. But they're definitely operating in that same style of kind of you know, very classy, more mature, proggy, slightly minded um, style of traditional or you know U.S. power metal. So the reason this topic comes up tonight is that on a recent heavy metallurgy live stream, the one that I did with Aaron, the metal theologian, and also Jurgen Alman, one of the items I showed off was a band from the U.S. that operates in this Queensryche style. But, you know, when I mentioned them and a couple of others, Aaron mentioned, like, I hadn't really heard of some of those bands, which surprised me because I kind of assume Aaron's heard of everything. But when I thought about it, this was a style that never really got on the radar. And part of that is just an unfortunate consequence of timing. So let's start there. The bands I featured in the first video with Queensryche clones were bands that were operating mainly in the 1980s, following up on the success Queensryche had early on with albums like you know, The Warning, they obviously got on EMI very quickly, and kind of went from strength to strength with Rage for Order and, of course, Operation Mindcrime. So bands like Lethal, Air Apparent, you know, that were operating at that time, yeah, you know, they were sort of copying what Queensryche was doing in those days. The bands I'm going to talk about tonight are ones, however, that came a little bit later and were probably, I am, this is conjecture technically, I don't have this as stone cold fact from the horse's mouth or anything, but it seems these bands were most likely influenced by Empire. So a little later in the Queensryche catalog. Empire, of course, was a hugely successful record. And it came out in October 1990, spawned you know, some big hits, got videos on MTV. Silent Lucidity was the runaway hit from the album that got played to death forever, it felt like. And so, yeah, it's understandable that some bands would see the success Queensryche was having with that material and want to do something similar. Now, Empire itself is kind of a divisive record amongst Queensryche fans. There are some people that love it to death. There are others who feel like it's a little bit of a sellout album, that you know Queensryche was leaning towards some much more commercial-friendly territory on the album, and I think it's kind of undeniable they were. Operation Mindcrime struck a good balance. It was cerebral enough to be worthy of all you know the prog heads that you know adore that album and that band throughout the 80s but it did have songs that you know could get fm radio play and get a lot of repeat spins and views on mtv not just during headbangers ball but yeah with empire it definitely feels like they were shifting into a commercial direction but hey it was wildly successful for them we can grumble about it if we want to but <laughs> it was obviously a good call for the band my own take on Empire, for whatever it's worth, there are some songs I don't mind on it, but I'm not a huge fan of the album overall. I do feel that it's a little too stripped down, a little too simplified. Um, there's a few I like, but most of the tracks on that album I can do without. But other bands felt like they could do very well to emulate that particular style. The problem that occurred, and it'll be a recurring theme with all these albums and all these bands, is that the music landscape changed about a year after the release of Empire. You know, coming out in October 1990, Queensryche got a full year of exposure before Nirvana's Nevermind and Metallica's Black Album dropped in the early fall of 1991, 
And those two albums, of course, really helped reset the musical landscape. Add in Pearl Jam's 10, an album that I absolutely hate on every single imaginable level. And yeah, it, things moving forward were very different. Bands that were thus trying to you know, get up and running after they heard Empire come out, unfortunately, they were getting ready to release material after everybody stopped paying attention to stuff like Empire. It's been well documented that the heavy music landscape in the United States in the early and mid, maybe even the late 90s, was a really rough place to be for bands operating in a more traditional metal style. And unfortunately, that's where tonight's contestants fall. But enough gabbing. Let's actually get to showing some bands and playing a few clips so you can see what they sound like for yourself. I want to begin with the band that I mentioned during the heavy metallurgy stream with Jurgen and Aaron. It's a band out of San Diego, California called Zaxxis. And Zaxxis was one of the first ones to kind of get to the table and start recording stuff you know, in this later Queensryche mold. They were demoing stuff in 1989. And they released this, which is their first EP. It came out in 91. I don't know the exact release date. As you can tell by the cover, it wasn't exactly a lot of publicity or promotion that went into the item. It just comes in a plain white sleeve with a Zaxa sticker on it. There are some copies that have been circulated on white labels instead of these orangey labels. I, some collectors have mentioned that the white label copies might be an unofficial boot pressing. I don't know. I've not seen anything confirmed one way or the other about that. It is a little weird that such a small release would have had two different label pressings. Stranger things have happened. I mean, the Bashful Alley 7-inch single has, what, three different sleeve variants? Um, yeah, you never know. Regardless, this was, you know, not circulated very widely, even though Accent Records was, you know, a fully functional record label in the region. It wasn't just a band's, you know, own self-released item. Before we talk more about Zaxxas, I should play you some of it. So let's check out a little bit of one of the songs from this 1991 EP. And this is a clip from the song called One Nation. As usual, I want to skip some of the intro stuff and uh, get right into the meat of the songs so you have a good feel for what they sound like. So here is Zaxxas with One Nation. There is Zaxxas doing One Nation from their 1991 EP on Accent Records. So Zaxxas did get some other material recorded as well. They did a follow-up demo in 92, and they did release a full-length album simply called Zaxxas, which came out in 1995. And again, rough time for an American band to try to be releasing material in this style. I mean, even Queensryche had difficulty following up Empire. There's a four-year wait before you got Promised Land out. And Promised Land you know, is a very different album. It's a kind of slower, quieter, darker, moodier album. 
I want to add boring to that list. I know Promised Land has its fans. I've tried a few different times over the years to get into Promised Land, and I just find it a very dull, kind of lifeless listen. It's not that it's terrible, it's just it feels very flat, uh, especially compared to everything they'd done before. I've heard the Zaxxis album. I don't have a physical copy of it, so I've got nothing to really show off. It's not bad. It's operating in the same vein as the EP that you just heard a clip from. And some of the songs you know, are trying out slightly different things, a track that may be a little bit more proggy, one that may be a little bit more commercial friendly. But there's no you know, drastic changes in style. It's all operating in the same basic style. Not a bad album, but got absolutely no attention at the time of release. The band apparently got back together in 2015 and released another album called Return the Machine. I think that would be Returns, uh, Return of the Machine, but it's Returns the Machine. Don't really know what that's about. I haven't heard that album, so I can't really comment on it. But anyway, that is San Diego's Zaxxas. Technically listed as still active on the mothership, so maybe there'll be more material from Zaxxas in the future. All right. Against all odds, the second band we have tonight also begins with the letter Z. <laughs> Not often you're going to get to cover two Z bands in the same evening, but here we are now. Entertain us. You see what I did there with the Nirvana thing earlier? And the, yeah, you know what I did. Anyway, uh, we're going to leave San Diego, hop over to Texas. And check out the Houston area band Z Lot Z. Uh, this is their mini album, six tracks, so I want to call it a mini album from 1992. I have no idea where the name Z Lot Z comes from. Uh, I guess it wanted to be the very last thing you saw as you were flipping through the album bin. I don't know. Anyway, before we talk about Z Lot Z, let's see what these fellas sound like. So this will be a clip from track number one off the EP, which came out in 1992. And uh, this is a song called The Shadow. <laughs> All right, there is Z Lot Z with a cool tune called The Shadow from their 1992 mini album. So Z Lot Z, kind of again, exact same zip code as Saxis, except one's from San Diego and one's from Houston, so they're actually very different zip codes, but I think you get what I mean. They're you know both you know trying to play relatively heavy music, but you know, strong vocals, good songwriting. It, if Empire's not an influence on these bands, I'll eat my vintage Lemmy, you know, 100% full leather jock strap. <laughs> and the bands are, you know, kind of operating with that sound. Uh, Zlot Z also followed some other, you know, similar trajectory in that they would release uh, not just one, but actually two albums this time, but it wouldn't be until the mid 90s. They released one called Tearing at Your Mind in 1995 and Soul Existence in 1998. I do not own hard copies of either of these, but I have them all as downloads. And once again, they're both pretty good. I think the EP is the strongest material. Uh, it's really good. I, again, EP, mini album. I hate it when they put six tracks on. I never know what to call it. 
whatever you want to call this thing, I call it really, really good material. Very strong, good set of songs. The two albums are not bad. They obviously are kind of, you know, low budget things. They don't have, you know, a huge production behind them or anything like that. They're still operating in this same style of, you know, somewhat accessible 90s, uh, progressive, you want to call it power rock, prog, hard rock, whatever you want to use to describe it. They're doing the same basic thing. Uh, there's some songs that feel more proggy, some that feel more moody, and some that were definitely meant to you know, try to garner some attention from radio play. Uh, Z Lot Z did have at least one member who propped up in some other projects, and I always get his name a little bit wrong, so hold with me for a minute while I double check the notes. Uh, it's the guitar player, and it's Eric... I cannot seem to click a link tonight. Let's see. Eric Halpern. Uh, Eric played with both Hellstar and Destiny's End. I don't think he's on any recorded output from those bands. So he may have been like a touring member, just a live member, session member. But he wasn't present during any of the recording sessions. He also played with Leatherwolf and is on two of their albums from the kind of early and mid 2000s. Let's double check which ones those are because I don't know the Leather Wolf discography very well at all. Let's see. Eric was on World Asylum 2006 and New World Asylum 2007. Yes, they had a theme going on at that time. But yeah, anyway, Zaxxis uh, and Z Lot Z share an awful lot in common, not just the letter Z. Both very good bands. There's just no way they were going to get attention with the style of music in America in the mid-90s. And the same, sadly, is going to be true for our third and last entry for the night. Now, this is not a Z band. <laughs> you can't quite pull the hat trick with that one. Uh, this is a band from Rochester, New York, called New Religion. Not the most original name. When you type New Religion into Google or Discogs, you get a whole lot of other stuff. If you're looking for them on Discogs, I think they're New Religion number three in the parentheses afterwards. They released some material, including an EP in 1994, which I don't own. They did make CD copies of it. I've just never been able to track one down for a decent price. Uh, it looks like this, so we'll just look at it on the phone for the time being. It's not a real expensive CD. It's usually like, you know, 25, 30 bucks, but then you have to add shipping, which is almost always overseas shipping. And that pushes it kind of well into the, the $40 range. And that's a little more than I want to pay for it. But it is a very, very good EP. It's simply called New Religion. It came out in 1994. And yeah, let's check out a little bit of the song called World Gone Mad. There is New Religion with World Gone Mad off their 1994 EP. Uh, lyrically a little similar to the track I picked from the Zaxxas album. Hadn't really planned that. If nothing else, it goes to show kids these days, folks were singing about, you know, countries, you know, 
torn into and the world falling apart well before either Trump or Obama were in office. So it's not really that new of a phenomenon. Anyway, New Religion, great little EP. Vocalist obviously influenced by Jeff Tate there. Um, drum sound may be a little clunky, but I can overlook that because it's a solid set of songs. The band did get an album out a couple of years later. So like the other two acts I've talked about tonight, they did manage to release an album simply called New Religion 2 with the two in Roman numerals. And it came out in 1996. And you couldn't set yourself up for more failure if you had tried. It's a shame because, again, these bands all have some talent and some cool music I enjoy, but they were just putting out the wrong sound at the wrong time in the wrong place. Now, New Religion also did have some unreleased material, and I'm actually fortunate enough to have these on MP3 files that I got from another collector uh, years and years ago, but they're dated 1994, 1995, so they're probably stuff that they recorded after the EP tracks, but before they settled in and wrote the full album. I don't think there are many tracks, if any, that made it to the album. Again, I have not heard the full album, or if I have, it's been ages ago. But scanning the track list, unless some of them got retitled or sort of reworked, they're not really on the album. The unreleased material is really, really good. If anything, some of the songs tend to be a little bit faster, have a little more energy. Uh, they kind of pick up the pace on a few of them. But the vocal performance is still really, really strong. Songwriting is still really, really tight. So it's kind of a shame... Those unreleased tracks, uh, you know, never got to see the light of day. Lots of bands had that unfortunate fate, however. Now, there is some hope for projects like this. And I should have mentioned this a minute ago when I was talking about Z-Lot Z. Uh, Z-Lot Z did get the anthology treatment in 2020. There's an anthology called Power of One, and it came out on a a Greek label called Arcane Steel Records. Uh, Arcane is spelled really oddly. It's spelled A-R-K-E-Y-N. So Arcane Steel. The label's been around for a couple of decades, and they tend to specialize in releasing 90s material by bands that maybe only had like a cassette release or demos but never got a full release. Uh, they've done stuff by bands like Scarlet Rain, Manifest. I'm pretty sure they did the Kingsbane release. Um, I'm pretty sure that one was Arcane still too. Regardless, it's a nice little label. You know, the releases tend to be pretty straightforward uh, in terms of liner notes and such. But they've always had a good nose for finding these 90s era bands. Not so much 80s bands, but more 90s era bands that... Yeah, just sadly got overlooked at the time and getting their material onto CD. Since they did it for Z-Lot Z, it'd be nice. Maybe they can do the same for New Religion and try to get the EP put back out with a lot of those unreleased tracks from the 94-95 era as well. And if Arcane Steel is not interested, maybe another label can jump in there and do the same thing. So there you have it. Three bands that were apparently quite influenced by Queensryche's Empire. And you know, they put together good bands. They had the songwriting chops to make some good music. Unfortunately, there just wasn't enough time after the release of Empire before grunge uh, took over, metal fell out of vogue. And as such, these bands were left operating in a bit of a heavy metal wasteland in their own country for a long time. But at least for this one little video, They've gotten their 15 minutes to shine, and maybe some folks can pick up on them, enjoy them, and yeah, track down a few of these albums or anthologies to see what more of the band's music was like. Okay, since it's about time to wrap up, it means now let's talk metal in the comments down below. What other bands are operating in this style that I've overlooked? I know there are more. I probably have some more in my own collection, so there might be a part three in this kind of Queensryche clones series someday. But there are also bands out there I've never heard of. Maybe you had a band on your local scene that, yeah, really had a Jeff Tate wannabe uh, behind the mic. Uh, and that was putting together some good stuff, but they just never made it, you know, out of the local or regional scene. 
What have you got like that? Are you familiar with any of the stuff on Arcane Steel? And if so, what releases are worth checking out? I got a lot of the early stuff on that label when they were first uh, got up and running, but then I kind of just lost track of them over the years. Uh, for example, I wasn't really even uh, aware they had done a Zlot Z anthology until very recently. So what do I need to go back and fill in with my Arcane Steel collection? Leave a comment down below so that I and others can learn about all the cool stuff you know. All right, with that, let's call this one to an end. Until next time, everybody take care, and as always, keep banging your head.